Did you know that 64% of the US population lives paycheck to paycheck? If this data is remotely correct, it's important to understand how you can manage your paycheck efficiently so that you are not just living comfortably today, but are also future-proofing your financial life. In this video, I will walk you through four things or four steps that you need to do as soon as you get paid. Before we get started, a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel and hit on the notification bell icon. Over 80% of the people who watch my channel haven't subscribed yet, so it will mean the world to me if you did. And now let's get started. When I moved to the US, I barely brought home $1,800 a month. I knew that I had to manage money efficiently to build a life that I wanted for myself. What I will share with you today is a system that I use regularly. I use it on a monthly basis. This system is fine-tuned for my requirements based on my financial goals and it has evolved over time. I share this with you for educational purposes only. Take what resonates with you. The very first thing that you should do, and actually this is something that you can do right away today, even without waiting for your next paycheck to arrive, is to create a baseline. Review your previous month's expenses to understand on an average, how much do you spend on your rent, your groceries, your car, your transportation, utilities, and credit cards? Fun fact, I have recorded this every single month since 2008. I don't use any fancy tools. A simple Excel worksheet is what I use. Every first of the month, I create a copy of the previous month's sheet and it's ready for me to plan for the next month. This not only provides me a good understanding of my living expenses, but also helps me plan for the upcoming big expenses. For example, I know that my property taxes are due in April. Since my income is more or less fixed, I can plan on reducing my discretionary expenses or my fun expenses to fund that tax so that I don't have to pull out money from my savings. I know that in some months, like during holidays, my grocery bill is higher than other months. So I have an ideal amount column in my worksheet. This column actually tells me what my ideal grocery expense should be. Now, if my grocery expense continues to be higher in the non-holiday months, like in January or February, I know that I have to go back and review my grocery expenses to see how I can bring them down. You can create a baseline using any method that works for you. If you want to use a simple free template, you can actually use mine. I've linked it in the description. Just go ahead and download it and start using it. Now, when you get your paycheck, review your pay stub. I talk to so many people who know what their base salary is or who understand what their total compensation is but have no idea about the deductions or the net pay that they bring home. Your net pay determines how much you can realistically spend each month so it's important to know about it. Take a look at your gross salary. Now check all the deductions. This pay stub that we are looking at right now is a sample pay stub for an early employee in California. Notice that it has federal and state tax deductions and 401k deductions as well. It's important to understand your pay stubs so that you are aware of where your money is going. For example, here, since the federal and state tax are already taken care of, I don't have to worry about it now. Same with the 401k deductions. After reviewing the pay stub, it's time to manage your paycheck. Let me open the template that I use so that I can walk you through the process. You can also use this template, just download it from the link in the description and you'll be ready to use. I'm making it available for free for you. As you see, I have the total salary over here. Note that this is the net salary, which means that it doesn't include the deductions like 401k or taxes. Those are already deducted from our paychecks in the US. So the income taxes and the retirement is already taken care of. Now, if you live in a country where taxes and retirement deductions are not made automatically, you'll need to account for those in this worksheet. Since we have two monthly paychecks, one for me and one for my husband, we have two entries over here. As soon as you get your paycheck, take out 10% of your total net income and put it in a place where you can get high interest and you can access it easily. For us, this was a non-negotiable. I live in Silicon Valley and layoffs are frequent over here. Job security is really low. So we needed at least eight months of living expenses readily available. This is often called the emergency fund. We built our emergency fund with the 10% saving. Once we built our emergency fund for about eight months, we now use these 10% savings for our investments. If you have debt at a high interest rate, say anything between 4% to 5%, Still go ahead and plan for at least a couple of months of emergency fund before you start prioritizing paying off your debt. 
once you have some money in the emergency fund say for one or two months focus on paying off the loan with the highest interest rate first after the loan in the highest interest rate is paid you then put that money towards the account with the next highest interest rate and then the next one and go on until you are done the important thing over here to remember is that your goal is to pay the debt off and not pay it off to accumulate more bad debt now when i and my husband first started managing our money this way we had some debt with high interest rate we cut off all our fun expenses to pay off that debt we didn't eat out for months didn't buy books or music that we both love our goal was to pay that debt off once the debt was paid we added back the fun fund to our monthly expenses i see fun money as investment in myself to buy a new course or a book that will help me grow a new water bottle that will motivate me to stay hydrated these are the expenses that we can cut down if we need but are there so that we don't feel guilty about spending on ourselves if our budget allows the next step is to evaluate your incidentals fund managing your paycheck involves two things first is understanding the basics how much money is coming in what you are spending on and all that good stuff and the second one which is often the overlooked part of it is the mental peace or the psychological aspect this incidentals funds is actually the psychological comfort of knowing that if your car breaks down or if you need urgent health care you have funds to take care of that situation without pulling out from your investments or from your emergency savings imagine the peace of mind of knowing that if your car ever breaks down or if you have a medical emergency you have actually funds put aside to take care of it you don't have to go into debt or pull from your savings to pay for these emergencies that is the benefit of an incidental fund the peace of mind just from having this fund tucked away somewhere and knowing that you have access to this money if needed notice that i have two categories for this in my excel sheet the medical expenses and incidentals the reason behind this is that when you have a big bulk of money sitting in one category it's human tendency to use it all however when you subcategorize it you use money more judiciously so now if we have money left over from medical expenses we move it to our savings earlier when we had all this in one category we noticed that we spent it sometimes on wants rather than saving it for the needs one thing that i forgot to mention is that many times we have money coming in from side hustles make sure that you account for that money in the income that's coming in alongside your monthly pay and then leverage that money in two ways one you can either invest all that money and save all that money and second is that you can use that money either to pay off your debt or invest back in your business but make sure that you are capturing those details as well in your monthly expenses now many people ask me this question about the money that you have saved is it better to invest that money or use it to pay off mortgage or student loan the reality is that it depends it depends on your unique situation and what gives you the peace of mind for me paying off my loan even when the interest rate was very low on it gave me that mental peace that i needed you would argue that i could have rather invested that money in sp500 and made more in the interest and that's true but the relief that i got knowing that i'm loan free was more important to me at that time in my life so that's how i allocate my money on payday if you found this video useful i would love for you to subscribe Again over 80% of the people who watch my channel have not subscribed and you subscribing would mean the world to me thank you so much for watching have a successful week bye bye